from the book about fluidal energy respectively, fluidal powers and other things. Questions and answers. Excerpts from, Kitchen Conversations, Voice of the Aquarian Age, Introduction to Meditation, The Spiritual Teachings, and, Pleiadian Pleiadian Contact Conversations, put together by Bridget Keller. Elaboration, Billy Edward Albert Meyer. Copyright 2007. Pages 6, 13. For the purpose of understanding words. Psychokinesis means the effect that the human psyche and the entire block of mentality have on the world of material objects without other causes coming into play. Psychokinesis is elicited by mere thinking or wishing, and so forth, as a rule, unconsciously. Psychotelekinesis results when long-stored, mental, fluidal powers are brought, from the block of mentality, in an unconscious way, to manifestation over greater distances, as a result of factors of psychic damage. Telekinesis relates to such movements when it deals with a considerable distance over which a human, living at the given time, consciously, at that time, moves a material object by way of his mental powers alone. In both cases, all kinds of objects can be moved as a result of the block of mentality's mental powers, whereby the thoughts, feelings, psyche and the consciousness constitute this block. With this, the psyche is the determining factor if the action is executed unconsciously. If the process is consciously desired, then the thoughts and the consciousness determine the entire occurrence. Psychopyrokinesis is the state whereby the human psyche and the mental powers unconsciously affect the world of material objects without another cause coming into play, whereby fire is caused by means of unconscious thoughts or wishes. If the event is brought about consciously, then the term pyrokinesis is used. Psychomaterial kinesis is based on this effect when the influence of the human psyche and all the powers of the block of mentality in an unconscious manner, produce effects on the world of material objects in such a way that the materials become defective or bend, and so forth. Material kinesis applies to that occurrence when, in a conscious and desired manner, material things are altered in their molecular structure and are brought to the point of being broken or deformed and so forth, by means of the block of mentality and the mental fluidal powers which arise from it. Levitation means the subjective, unaided lifting, which can be experienced, of the weight of the body and the floating of the body in space, and, indeed, solely as a result of the block of mentality's mental fluidal powers. Teleplasty is the conscious generation of shadowy forms and projections by means of the block of mentality's powers. With this, however, if the human psyche, in cooperation with the entirety of the mental powers, is the actual trigger of the phenomena, then the projections are completely unconsciously evoked. In this case it then deals with an apparition in the form of psychoteleplasty. However, this phenomenon has, in no way, anything to do with a materialization of ghosts slash spirits, as these materialization phenomena are interpreted and explained by spiritualism. Actually, with that, it therefore does not deal with so-called ectoplasm apparitions, respectively, teleplasma apparitions, from which the term teleplasty has recently appeared. Translators note teleplasma is a Greek word used in German, but not English if these materialization phenomena are unconsciously evoked as a result of certain damaged states of the psyche, then it is psychoteleplasty. Therefore, none of that, neither in one form nor the other, has anything to do with the so-called ectoplasm apparitions of spiritualism. Teleportation means that a body, respectively, an object, can in an invisible process similar to beaming be moved quite consciously from one location to another as a result of the powers of the block of mentality, respectively, of the thoughts, feelings, psyche and consciousness alone. If all that happens in a completely unconscious manner, then the entire occurrence is controlled and triggered as a result of the state of the psyche. Thereby the term psychoteleportation is used. The term psychoautokinesis is based on the phenomenon whereby humans who suffer from a specific psychophysical form, respectively, possession, 
physically injure themselves as a result of their own mental powers and can even sexually rape themselves in this way. Psychoautopyrokinesis is the term for the mentally triggered process of self-burning. With pyrokinesis, an ignition of desired materials results due to quite consciously engendered, regulated and controlled mental powers of the block of mentality's electromagnetic oscillations. In contrast to that is psychopyrokinesis, which is evoked in an unconscious and uncontrollable manner by the powers of a damaged psychic state. Due to ignorance in parapsychology, and so forth, teleportation and telekinesis are often erroneously equated, which, however, is incorrect, because they basically deal with two different factors telekinesis is a product, of mental fluidal powers, engendered at a given time, respectively. It is the powers of electromagnetic oscillations which are consciously created and brought into effect directly as a result of the block of mentality of a human living in the given time, whereby, in a materially visible manner, material bodies, respectively, objects, move and are transported and, indeed, without the assistance of any kind of material aid. On the other hand, teleportation is based on bodies items or other kinds of material objects, being invisibly transported, in a consciously desired and controlled manner, from one location to another at the speed of light, and, indeed, likewise as a result of the block of mentality's power, respectively, as a result of the mental fluidal powers, thoughts, feelings and psyche as well as the consciousness, respectively as a result of the powers of the mental electromagnetic oscillations of the block of mentality. Psycho this term, as it is used in words such as psychoteleportation, psychotelekinesis or psychoteleplasty, and so forth, means that the pertinent phenomenon is triggered in a completely unconscious manner, solely as a result of a psyche's damaged state, and emerges from it. Consequently the human therefore has no knowledge that he suffers from psychic problems, and, as a result of that, triggers the phenomenon via his psyche and his block of mentality, respectively, as a result of its mental fluidal powers. In contrast to that is the completely conscious form, such as, for example, telepathy, teleportation and telekinesis, and so forth, in which the term, psycho, is not a prefix. That means that the aforementioned forms are completely consciously and volitionally engendered as a result of the mental fluidal powers, respectively, as a result of the block of mentality and its electromagnetic oscillations and its powers, consequently the phenomena are therefore consciously engendered, regulated and controlled. These differences are, in their actuality, obviously still not known to parapsychological research because these kinds of explanations are nowhere to be found within specialist, parapsychological texts. That is also the case with other parascientific things and facts, whereby even the most various terminologies are included in regard to the most various parapsychological phenomena. Kinetics deals with the study of motion under the influence of internal or external powers, therefore, movements, unconsciously triggered by the psyche which are identified by a word prefixed with the term psycho, as, for example, psychokinetics or psychotelekinetics, and so forth. Every kind of effect which is produced by the powers of electromagnetic oscillations, respectively, as a result of the block of mentality's mental fluidal powers, respectively, as a result of the thoughts and feelings and the psyche and the consciousness, and is able to change material things, is called movement respectively, kinetics, in the spiritual teachings of Noko the Mion and Henoch. And such alterations are related to the shifting, turning, tossing about, lifting up, floating, flying, tossing up or down, and so forth, of material objects, and so forth, as well as to the generation of manifestations in respect to sounds to do with stored fluidal powers. The principle of movement, respectively, Kinetics, is also understood in the spiritual teachings in this respect when, as a result of mental powers, any kind of material experience is a change in its structure, is pierced, bent, shattered, ignited or is changed in some other way. Additionally, movement, respectively, 
kinetics is also understood in the spiritual teachings as applying to the human attacking his own body by means of his own mental powers and changing it thereby in such a way that he inflicts damage and injuries upon himself or as a result of self-burning is transformed into ashes and so forth Therefore, in the understanding of the spiritual teachings, all of that functions according to the concept change as a result of movement, respectively, kinetics, bioelectromagnetic fluidal oscillations, bioelectromagnetic fluidal energy, bioelectromagnetic power this deals, on one hand, with the block of mentality's oscillations, respectively, with the oscillations, energies and powers of the consciousness, thoughts and feelings, as well as of the psyche, on the other hand, however, also with the oscillations of the body and as well as of all the organs, as well as of the character and the personality. In general, however, in regard to the aforementioned terms, one speaks only of electromagnetic oscillations, as well as of fluidal energies or fluidal powers, for which reason, also in this book, the named primary terms must always be understood, when the talk is of mental oscillations, fluidal energies and fluidal powers. Psyche is the factor in which the state of the negative and or positive mood, respectively, the atmosphere of the inner attitude, produces, from the state, that is to say, from the form of the thoughts and feelings, self-confidence, from which, in a positive sense, exaltation, encouragement, joy, hope and being emotionally well positioned and so forth are supported. Whereas, in a negative sense despondency, joylessness, dejection and hopelessness, and so forth, arise. Psyche is the name for the half-material block and factor, which, in the material body of a form of life, in this case, the human, organizes and administers, within itself in a negative or positive sequence, the thoughts and feelings of the material consciousness from which results a negative or positive imbalance or a neutral positive equilibrium, whereby the human is then simply negatively or positively out of balance or neutrally positively balanced. A positive or negative imbalance means, for the psyche, that it is degenerated in one form or another, while neutrally positively balanced means that, in the psyche, an equilibrium exists which consists of the same values of negative and positive, each to the same degree, whereby neither a negative or positive degeneration therefore arises, rather simply a symmetry and, consequently a balanced harmony. In no way does the psyche have anything to do with a soul, in the sense that the old and new philosophers, such as Plato, Aristotle, and Democritus, and so forth, as well as the Stoics and Epicureans and Greek mythology, and so forth, describe it, according to their principle. The psyche also has nothing to do with so-called, soul-traveling, the immortal spirit also does not reside therein, nor does it embody the human's reason or his actual self. All that is every bit as incorrect as Plato's representation being that the psyche is the automotive power in the world and in the human, whose actual self consists of reason in the head logisticos, courage timos in the chest, and desire reptimia in the lower abdomen, of which, reason is that which is divine in the human and, as such, is immortal. Aristotle asserted that the psyche is the first entelechy, respectively, the form which manifests materially, respectively the power residing in the physical organism which affects its development and completion. Always according to Aristotle, this is supposed to produce the organism's form, and, with plants, the ability to take up nourishment and to propagate. With this, the animals are supposed to be able to possess sensory perception as well as the ability to desire and to move from one place to another. The human is supposed to merge these abilities in himself, for which reason he receives the immortal spirit put into him from outside. According to the Stoics, the psyche was a body, and indeed a subtly detailed, fiery pneuma, respectively, an air-like, fiery principle of nature and of life. Democritus and the Epicureans also taught that the psyche is corporal, and, indeed, is best compared with a warm pneuma, consisting of the smoothest and roundest atoms from which a part thereof is distributed, 
completely unreasonably, over the entire body, while the part of the soul endowed with reason was assigned to its seat in the chest. The assertion of Greek philosophy is also incorrect when it asserts that the psyche life, soul is the principle of life. Its bearer is the body, and the principle itself is the bearer of the spirit and the human. Greek mythology also comes up with the absurd assertion that the psyche is the shadowy image of the human, represented as winged or as a bird, butterfly or some other kind of winged female entity. And what there is yet to say the aforementioned designations do not stem from purely terrestrial assessments of values of terms, because only some were created by earth humans who occupied themselves with parapsychology. Diverse other terms and designations stem from Noko the Myons and Henoch's spiritual teaching and were reshaped in an understandable way for the earth humans by, Billy, Edward A. Meyer with the help of the Pleian and Patar. Specifically, these terms concern psychoteleportation, psychoteleplasty, material kinesis as well as psychomaterial kinesis, pyrokinesis, psychopyrokinesis, psychotelekinesis, psychoprojection, psychoautopyrokinesis and psychoautokinesis. Bioelectromagnetic frequencies equals mental fluidal powers The block of mentality's mental fluidal powers are based on bioelectromagnetic oscillations and energies which display certain powers and certain frequencies depending on the personality. They are therefore called mental fluidal powers, respectively, bioelectromagnetic oscillations, because they are, as opposed to actual measurable, material, electromagnetic oscillations, of a fine matter form and therefore cannot be measured in the manner in which normal electromagnetic waves are measured. But just as normal electromagnetic oscillations can be stored in certain materials, such as, for instance, metal, whereby magnets result, that is also characteristic of mental fluidal powers, respectively, of the block of mentality's bioelectromagnetic oscillations. In contrast, the storage of mental fluidal power does not function magnetically, rather purely by means of oscillations, whereby they can be perceived by sensitive humans or can be used for mental evolution, or for manifestations, as a result of the powers of the person in whom they originate, respectively, the new personality. Just as every magnet has two poles, a north and south pole, respectively, a positive and a negative, that is also characteristic of mental fluidal powers, which are both positive and also negative, whereby, for humans who are able to very sensitively perceive the mental fluidal powers, the positive effects attraction, respectively, sympathy, and the negative effects repulsion, respectively, antipathy while, with magnets, polarizing and magnetizing is organized on an electrotechnical basis, that which determines the negative and positive aspects of mental fluidal powers is the character and personality of the human. The power of the mental fluidal powers, respectively, bioelectromagnetic oscillations, is based on the so-called field size, respectively, the field strength of the vector field, respectively, the carrier field, whereby the entirety, however, in contrast to the purely material realm, is of fine matter nature and, at least at the current time of the beginning of the 21st century, is not yet able to be proven physically and by natural science and indeed as a result of the absence of suitable technical measuring devices. The block of mentality, mental fluidal powers if the talk is of mental fluidal powers, then it thereby deals with a matter which belongs to so-called parapsychology, as this branch of the, incomprehensible, supernatural, and, extrasensory, is called by earth humans, whereby, it must be said that there is no such thing as the, incomprehensible, supernatural, and, extrasensory. Actually, everything can be rationally explained and understood when the required knowledge and the necessary cognition relating to the, amazing things, and so forth, is present. But it also must be said that, in regard to mental fluidal powers, neither in parapsychological research nor in the area of the knowledge of natural science, is the fact of the existence of mental fluidal powers known. Also there has obviously still never been research in this direction. And, indeed, neither from the side of natural scientists nor from that of the parapsychologists.
and the fact is also, that, in regard to the human's mental powers, an enormous ignorance and misunderstanding of these things exists, out of which arises, on a large scale, prejudices, delusions, spiritualism, esotericism, differences of opinion, disagreements, confusions, contradictions, misinterpretations and falsifications, belief in ghosts slash spirits, belief in possession and exorcism, stigmatization, dowsing and an inability to gain cognition. Accompanying that, angst about death, the devil and ghosts is immensely stirred up among the delusional humans, whereby quite especially also religious faith significantly contributes in regard to belief in the devil, demons and ghosts slash spirits. The humans are not seldom in a state of conflict in regard to these things, which often leads to discord, quarrels and hate, and so forth, however also to white cultic and black cultic behavior in the form of religious, or religion antagonistic, rituals and to exorcism machinations, and so forth. Again and again it also leads to the death of humans, for example, when, as a result of delusion, possession by Satan, evil spirits or demons is assumed and the allegedly possessed human is beaten to death, strangled or stabbed, and so forth. But also the killing of humans as a result of delusions about witches must be mentioned, which is even the case now and again today, as it was at the time of the Inquisition. And the killing of humans must not be forgotten because even today murderous sacrificial rituals still occur in order to allegedly drive out the devil, demons or evil spirits. Clarification is urgently necessary but the length of time it takes the responsible scientists to finally get to the bottom of the effective truth in regard to their mental powers, respectively, the human's mental fluidal powers, in order to recognize how these powers actually function is how long it will be that the delusional belief in, amazing things, spiritualism, the driving out of demons and devils, possession and evil spirits, and so forth, will further rule the delusional superstitious humans and continue to spread much angst and terror. Due to the delusion about the aforementioned absurdities, humans' angst about death is also driven high which not seldom leads to those with labial dispositions succumbing to psychiatric difficulties, which can, under certain circumstances, lead to the destruction of the psyche and reason. The End